This morning, the search area for Flight 370 now covers 7 million square miles. While it's still possible the jet flew along a northwestern curve, American officials believe it's more likely the plane traveled along a southwestern route across the Indian Ocean. The combined range is so vast, it's like searching all of Russia. CBS This Morning contributor Michio Kaku is a physics professor at the City University of New York. He joins us this morning from Nashville. Good morning. Morning. Let's talk about the Indian Ocean, where much of this search is now focused. We know this is the third largest ocean in the, in the uh, world. What's our biggest concern? What's our biggest challenge? Well, Hollywood has us brainwashed into thinking that we can locate a cell phone in the middle of the ocean. Wrong. It doesn't work that way. The Indian Ocean is basically a dead zone, a black hole with regards to radar. And remember that even in the Atlantic Ocean, where we actually can map the Atlantic Ocean, it took 70 years to locate the Titanic after, we, after it went down. And Air France 447, it took two years to locate the flight recorder, even though we knew precisely where Air France 449, 447 went down back in 2009. So it's like finding a needle in 10,000 haystacks. Mm -hmm. Michio, uh, the Aviation Safety Network says that since 1948, 83 large aircraft have in fact vanished, disappeared. Is there a chance we may not find this plane? Yes, there is a chance that we may never find the wreckage. First of all, the Indian Ocean has currents. Ocean currents, so time is not on our side. The debris field becomes larger and larger with time goes by. And the good news is, however, that the flight recorder emits an ultrasonic beacon, a beacon that can be picked up by submarines. The bad news is it has a battery life of 30 days. Mm. After 30 days, the flight recorder goes blank and we go blind. Yeah, you know, we know you mentioned Air France flight. That was at about 12,700 feet when it was found. The average depth of the Indian Ocean is about that same amount, but there are deeper areas of the Indian Ocean. If that plane is somewhere deeper, will we be able to find it? That's the problem. Realize that a conventional submarine cannot go down two miles underneath the surface. It would be crushed like an eggshell. We have to have robots called ROVs to go down and find it. But robots are very slow, very time consuming, and they're very expensive. And so time is not on our side. We have to find the wreckage soon while the flight recorder is still emitting this beacon before currents wash the debris into different areas. Time is not on our side. We have to find the flight recorder, find the wreckage soon, or else we may never find it. All right, Professor Michio Kaku, thank you so much.